The recent failures of Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, and Signature Bank in March, both among the largest U.S. banks to collapse since the Great Depression in the 1930s, have raised concerns about the possibility of a broader banking crisis looming on the horizon. Today, we're going to discuss how major banking companies could collapse in winter due to the recent wave of economic mistakes. Throughout March, the stability of the banking sector was rattled by a series of notable bank collapses, a volatile stock market, and global concerns in the banking industry. The catalyst for this disruption was the sudden closure of Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, marking the first FDIC-insured bank failure in two years. SVB had previously held a prominent position as one of the largest banks catering to the tech startup sector and ranked as the 16th largest bank in the United States. However, when the bank was compelled to sell bonds at a significant loss, its stock value sharply declined, and depositors grew anxious, resulting in a traditional bank run. This incident stands as the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. In a matter of days, the third largest bank failure occurred when Signature Bank also seized its operations. The FDIC assumed control of SBB's branches and deposits before being acquired by First Citizens, while New York Community Bancorp secured a significant portion of Signature Bank's assets. The collapse of these banks triggered widespread anxiety, particularly among regional banks, where institutional clients held substantial amounts of uninsured deposits. The stock market for banking institutions experienced considerable volatility, and concerns emerged regarding the ability of other banks, such as First Republic Bank, to weather the financial turbulence. Unfortunately, First Republic Bank did not withstand these challenges, and on Monday, May 1st, it became the third bank to fail this year. J.P. Morgan Chase will acquire most of the distressed bank's assets. During March, various federal agencies such as the U.S. Treasury, the Federal Reserve, and the FDIC collaborated to mitigate the impact and divest the distressed bank's assets. Over time, anxieties eased as deposit outflow stabilized, indicating a resolution to the recent banking crisis. However, the collapse of First Republic Bank has rekindled apprehensions about the overall stability of the banking system, with a specific focus on the well-being of regional banks. Despite efforts by the U.S. government and commercial institution to keep First Republic Bank afloat, it has collapsed. The majority of the troubled bank's assets were purchased by J.P. Morgan Chase, and under its brand, J.P. Morgan Chase is reopening First Republic's 84 offices spread across eight states. All First Republic depositors are now J.P. Morgan Chase clients. Additionally, J.P. Morgan will purchase from First Republic $30 billion in securities and $173 billion in debts. The bank eventually gave in to the market and was unable to negotiate any transactions to preserve it. It had been working hard to make up the losses in recent months. Eleven American banks banded together in the middle of March to provide $30 billion in liquidity to the First Republic in order to keep it from failing. But in the weeks that followed, the bank's problems worsened. According to its first quarter balance statement, First Republic Bank had been in grave danger of failing ever since Silicon Valley Bank's failure earlier in the year witnessing outflows of over $100 billion in deposits. The bank stock had an over 40% decline on April 28th. First Republic Bank was placed into receivership by the regulator after the FDIC decided it couldn't be saved. Afterward, J.P. Morgan Chase made an offer for all of First Republic Bank's deposits, which was accepted. The first bank to fail since late 2020 is Silicon Valley Bank, SVB. Vox Media, Roku, Etsy, and Roblox are some of the well-known businesses that held money in SVB and were impacted by the bank's failure. The bank's death was suddenly announced, but several factors were building up before that. With more than $209 billion in assets at the end of 2022, SVB, which caters to technology startups and venture capital firms, became the second largest bank to collapse since the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, began keeping records in 1934. At the end of 2022, Signature had nearly $110.4 billion in assets, making it the fourth largest bank failure when adjusted for inflation. Signature served numerous large New York law firms and real estate companies as clients and was one of the few mainstream banks to seek out cryptocurrency deposits. The United States has seen two significant banking crises since the FDIC was established during the Great Depression, both of which resulted in the failure of hundreds of institutions. The largest U.S. banking failures, measured by total assets, occurred during the two prior crises, with the exception of SVB and Signature. The extended savings and loan crisis decimated the industry four decades ago, 
According to the Pew Research Center review of FDIC data, more than 2,900 banks and thrifts with total assets of more than $2.2 trillion collapsed between 1980 and 1995. More recently, the global financial crisis that followed the housing meltdown led to the failure of more than 500 banks between 2007 and 2014, with total assets of approximately $959 billion. This includes Washington Mutual, which continues to be the country's largest bank failure. When Washington Mutual failed, it had assets worth about $307 billion, or over $424 billion in today's currency. The total figure excludes banks that were sold under duress but didn't actually fail, such as Countrywide Financial and Wachovia, as well as investment banks like Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, which weren't federally insured. American financial failures have typically been rare, at least since the conclusion of the Great Depression, save from those two crisis periods. 5.3 banks failed each year on average between 1941 and 1979. Between 1996 and 2006, there were 4.3 bank failures on average each year and 3.6 between 2015 and 2022. In fact, it had been more than two years since the last bank bankruptcy prior to SVP and Signature. The situation was quite different a century ago. An average 635 banks failed between 1921 and 1929, according to FDIC statistics, because many states only allow banks to have one office. These were primarily small, rural banks. People who held money in a collapsed banks were essentially out of luck as there were only eight states with deposit guarantee funds. That implied that depositors had a compelling incentive to withdraw their funds at the first indication of crisis. The nation's financial sector was severely damaged by the Depression. More than 9,000 banks failed nationwide between 1930 and 1933. Many of them were sizable, reputable urban organizations. The limited state deposit guarantees funds quickly became insufficient. In total, or 19.6% of all deposit, depositors and bankrupt institutions lost more than $1.3 billion, or $27.4 billion in today's currencies. The FDIC was established in 1933, and deposit insurances officially began on January 1, 1934. The FDIC then spent the following 10 years clearing up the ruins of the American banking system. But because of federal deposit insurance, which closed an average of 50.7 banks a year between 1934 and 1940, depositors' urge to flee problematic banks before they failed was significantly diminished. Banks can fail for a variety of reasons, but most of the time, they fall into one of three broad categories. A run on deposits, leaving the bank without enough cash to pay everyone who wants to withdraw their money, too many subpar loans or assets that decline sharply in value, or discrepancy between the bank's earning potential on its assets, which are primarily loans, and the amount it must pay on liabilities, which are primary deposits. Quite often, more than one of these influences is at play. For instance, as the Federal Reserve swiftly increased interest rates, SVB's sizable holdings of government bonds saw a decline in value. At the same time, more SVB clients started taking their money out as startup funding became more difficult to come by. Anxious depositors accelerated their withdrawals when the SVB took extreme measures to strengthen its balance sheet, including selling off its entire bond portfolio at a $1.8 billion loss and announcing it would sell $2.25 billion worth of new shares. According to the bank's December 31st call report, approximately 86% of SVB's total deposits were above the then-insurance maximum of $250,000. According to a recent Pew Research Center survey, about a third of Americans, 36%, say they are very concerned about the stability of banks and financial institutions, which is significantly less than the shares expressing that level of concern about consumer prices and housing costs. This has banking industry observers wondering if more dominoes will fall. Additionally, banks shouldn't count on much support from the general people. An October 2022 Center survey found that 40% of Americans believe banks and other financial institutions have a favorable impact on how things are going in the nation now, while 56% believe the opposite. One of the few things that unites partisans is a negative perception of the financial service sector. Similar percentages of Republicans and those who lean Republican, 59%, and Democrats and those who lean Democratic, 57%, indicated banks and financial institutions have a negative impact on the country in the same October 2022 study. That's all for today's video. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also, press the bell icon to get notified of upcoming videos. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below.